thank you very much for the opportunity to address new leadership of Tiger Bay. It's my privilege. I've been a delinquent member of the Orlando Bay Tiger Bay back when I had the time to actually enjoy the program, so it's good to be with you here on the Sun Coast. Let me start out by defining what this debate about same-sex marriage is and what it's not about. This is not a debate about whether homosexual men and women can be good citizens or good people. It's not a debate about whether uh, same-sex people that have same-sex attractions uh, can form caring relationships. There's no doubt in my mind that they can. In fact, I've been the personal recipient of such care for people in my extended family. This is not a debate about whether homosexuals should be treated with equal dignity, worth, or respect under the law. Gay identified men and women are citizens of the United States of America. They fight in the military, they pay taxes, and the vast majority of them are productive citizens. However, this is a debate about whether or not um, we as a society are going to wholly redefine a fundamental human institution and enforce that definition on the rest of society, primarily by means which are not for elected representation and democracy. I have about six hours of material and about six minutes to communicate with you, so I'm going to move rapidly, so please, please bear with me. Uh, marriage is rooted, I think there's three reasons I'd like to present to you why uh, same-sex marriage should continue to be banned in the state of Florida for the Constitution. Um, marriage is rooted in the natural order, and nature enforces that fact. And it also serves a compelling public purpose, and therefore it deserves public protection. Anthropologists tell us that marriage in every single human civilization is always between men and women sometimes multiple spouses, but always between men and women. And I can get up there and put a globe, and spin the globe, and I can put my finger down any landmass of any culture at any time frame and all of human civilization, and you will always find marriage as a sociological constant. Now, why is that? Is that because Jerry Falwell brainwashed everyone, or because of Dr. Law or something? No, it's because marriage is rooted in the natural order, and nature enforces that fact. And, and anthropologists and social scientists tell us that marriage does many things to protect society. It protects women. Now, marriage promotes stability in society. It provides the healthiest context for the raising of children. And marriage domesticates men. That may sound funny, but the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of us guys will still be eating Cheetos and watching TV all day if it wasn't for the ladies who in our lives and, and bring some order and, and domestication. It's a little bit funny, but the truth of the matter is that marriage does help to channel masculine energy in socially productive ways, and that is a public policy reason why we should continue to support the definition of marriage. Secondly, same-sex marriage subjects children to a vast, untested social experiment. And I think the turning point of this issue for me is that when I understood that the creation of a same-sex marriage, you are simultaneously creating a same-sex family. So now the question is not just two people living together as libertarians. The question is, what is the impact to children? Kids need a mom and a dad. Um, children need to understand the proper relationship between a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, and a father and a mother. That's just optimal human socialization. Um, and our opponents have really nothing to say at this point. And in fact, she will have nothing to say at all about gay marriage. She debated me like we did in Tiger Bay last week. Uh, because she's going to completely avoid the issue and just talk about benefits. And I'm going to address benefits in my rebuttal, but I want to talk about the main issue, and that's same-sex marriage. You'll hear her say nothing about same-sex marriage in this debate. But fathers and mothers are different. We, we play differently with children, we discipline, we motivate. I wrestle with my boys very differently than the way my wife wrestles with my boys. She doesn't wrestle with them at all, and that's the point, is that each brings a unique contribution. And the research of this is crystal clear. Marriage actually protects children protects them psychologically, emotionally, and physically. Um, the studies show us that not just one or two, even hundreds of thousands of peer-reviewed studies and referee journals show us that children always fare better when both the mother and the father are present. And the opposite is true. When a father or mother is absent, especially a father, all the social maladies are higher. High school dropouts, criminal behavior, teenage pregnancy, drug abuse, depression, suicide, it doesn't matter. All of them are higher when it's the absence of the father and mother. Finally, establishing same-sex marriages will necessarily undermine the legal basis for the prohibition against polygamy, against group marriage, and against other forms of marriage. 
and will create a new legal precedent for any form of aberrant marriage that comes to the table. Let me ask you this question, maybe even to the group. If we extend and redefine marriage to incorporate homosexual couples, then on what rational, legal, consistent, and constitutional basis do we then also deny marriage to other special interest groups that want to come to and demand marriage? And you can type in the words polygamy and group marriage in Google, and you can see that they were where homosexual activists were 15, 20 years ago. And finally, if homosexual marriage becomes law, then in order to avoid lawsuits for discrimination, our public schools will be forced to start teaching your children that homosexual behavior is the moral, social, and legal equivalent of marriage for the man and woman. In fact, this is already happening in Massachusetts. The NPR did a story on this. Deb Allen is an eighth grade teacher that was actually teaching lesbian sex with sex toys and diagrams and pictures. And she was challenged by parents. And this is what her comment She said, in my mind, I know that, OK, this is legal now. If somebody wants to challenge me, I'll say, give me a break. It's legal now. Do we want second grade, seven to eight year old children reading books, the books that are in Massachusetts, Heather has two mommies, or the Kings? The answer is no to that. And so um, we believe that this is why Amendment 2, in part, is needed. There are many, many reasons why this is important. But I've given you three. Um, please vote no, I'm sorry, please vote yes on Amendment 2. <laughs> <laughs> A yes vote on Amendment 2 defines marriage as the union of a man and a woman, which is the best arrangement for the rearing of children. Thank you.